So in, in this lecture, we will focus on a type of a sensing modality, which is most widely used on IoT devices. And this is called passive sensing. So let's go back and look what a sensor is. So sensor is a device that measures a physical phenomena and generates an electrical signal that corresponds to this external physical phenomena. And this electrical signal can then be processed by a microcontroller that is present on an IoT device. For example, a temperature sensor can produce electrical signal that changes with the ambient temperature. So how do we generate electrical signal? Let's go back and look at Ohm's law. So this, this dictates the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. So you can say V equals to IR. And if we change one of the parameters in Ohm's law, according to the external physical phenomena, we can create an electrical signal that corresponds to this external phenomena. And this is used by many sensors. So resistance is one of the parameters that we can change in Ohm's law to generate electrical signal. So what does the resistance depend upon? So if we have a conductor, the resistance depends on the resistivity, length, and the area of conductor, as we show by the formula on the slide. And what we find is that the different materials have very different resistivity, which itself can be a function of the external phenomena. So uh, what we can find is that the resistivity might change according to the temperature, light, or even strain. And that allows these resistive sensors to be able to generate electrical signal corresponding to, to external phenomena and allow microcontroller to be able to sense these external uh, phenomena. So one type of a resistive sensor is something called thermistor. And this is a resistor sensor that has two terminal. It's a simple device similar to the one that we show on the slide. And its resistance varies with the temperature. And in fact, its res resistance varies in a nonlinear curve according to the external temperature. So what are the advantages of resistive sensors? So resistive sensors are typically low cost. They are simple. And they are they can be they are very easily available and they can be also very versatile. But there are also certain disadvantages, such as these sensors require external uh, power source. They can have nonlinear behavior, for example, as we see for the thermistor on, and they can also be noisy and have limited range and bandwidth, which it affects uh, 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 when you are trying to sample at a high rate. So how do you measure resistance of a sensor? To answer this question, we need to review some basic electronic concepts that you might have learned in a high school. So we look at this uh, particular circuit topology that is called voltage divider. It's a simple circuit that consists of a voltage source and two resistance that are connected in series. And in this topology, the output voltage depends upon the ratio of the two resistors. In fact, if these two resistors have the same value, the output voltage is about half of the input voltage. So for the particular example on the slide, if R1 equals to R2, then V out would be the half of V in. And we can use this topology to measure the resistance of a sensor by connecting it to the known resistor. So for example, if R2 is the known resistor, we can replace R1 with an sensor and we know the voltage source V in, then we can figure out the, from the V out value what the resistance value R1 is. So let's look at an example with a thermistor and a light dependent resistor. So thermistor we had already seen, it's a sensor whose resistance val varies according to the ambient temperature. On the other hand, a light dependent resistance is a resistor or a, or a sensor whose resistance varies according to the ambient light intensity levels. So if we replace one of the resistance with, let's say, a light dependent resistor, what happens is that the, as the light level varies, the resistance changes and it causes the V out 
to also change accordingly. And we can then estimate the value of the light by inferring the resistance value of the LDR. So how do you actually read the V out on a microcontroller? You use a peripheral called analog to digital converter to convert the voltage value into the digital. And from digital, you can then have some equation to figure out what the particular resistance value of LDR corresponds to in terms of the light intensity. So resistor sensors are not the only kind of passive sensors. For example, in the case of temperature sensor, we also have something called, for example, thermocouple, which is consists of a junction of two different metals. And when you heat or uh, cool this uh, junction, a corresponding voltage is generated across this uh, uh, thermocouple. And this voltage can be used to determine the temperature of the heat source, or it can even be used to harvest energy to power the sensor on IoT device. So moving beyond the temperature sensor, let's look at something called piezoelectric materials. So these materials demonstrate something called piezoelectric effect. And what it allows is that it allows these materials to produce a voltage when they're subjected to a mechanical stress. And how can these mechanical stress be caused? It can be caused by various factors such as pressure, acceleration, or strain. So the voltage generated by these materials can be used to measure the magnitude and the direction of the stress that this material has been subjected to. And what this voltage could uh, allow us to do, it can allow us to, for example, sense this amount of uh, stress, or it can even be used to harvest energy to power IoT devices. So one of the common examples of piezoelectric element that we use in our day-to-day -day life, and you are also going to use in the assignment too, is if they, they are used in accelerometers. So accelerometer is a sensor that allows you to measure motion or acceleration. So an accelerometer typically consists of a small mass that is attached to a spring inside a chamber, similar to what we see on the slide. And what happens is that the, when the chamber is moved, the mass exerts a pressure on either a piezoelectric element or a plate of a capacitor. So what happens is that in the case of, for example, uh, the, cap uh, the, the capacitive piezo accelerometer, the force changes the capacitance of the circuit. And this change in the capacitance is proportional to the motion. And by, and this can actually allow us to estimate the amount and the direction of the applied force by being able to track the change in the capacitance. In a similar case, for the piezoelectric element, the force generates a voltage, which is then proportional to the motion. And this can allow us to measure the force and calculate the acceleration. So accelerometers usually measure the motion in the unit of G, where one G represents the acceleration due to Earth's gravity. One of the more widely used uh, uh, use of accelerometer is that they can be used as a tilt sensor. And, they, and this is most likely used by your phone or a tablet to detect tilt and change the screen orientation as you move the device. Moreover, accelerometers are also often used on mobile devices to track distance and uh, they can complement the GPS data uh, and give you some measurement of the distance that you have covered. And why would you want to use accelerometer over a sensor such as GPS, which is highly accurate? The reason is that the accelerometers are, uh, are, are very low power sensor, while GPS can be orders of magnitude more power consuming compared to an accelerometer. So another type of uh, sensor that is very widely used uh, to detect motion on IoT and mobile devices is something called gyroscope. And it enables you to measure the angular velocity, which is the rate of rotation around an axis. So how are these sensors now miniaturized because they have all these mechanical components? So there has been a lot of work in this area called micro electromechanical systems over the past two decades to miniaturize some of these uh, sensors into small form factor, which can then even be uh, placed into form factor of a ring for some of the variable devices. 
So what are microelectromechanical systems? So these integrate electrical and mechanical components at a microscopic scale. Typically, they are of the size of between one to 100 micrometers. And this enables creation of sensors and actuators that have very small factor and very low power consumption. For in instance, accelerometer and gyroscope, which measure mo motion and orientation, are commonly implemented as a MEMS device. So one of the remarkable achievement of the MEMS technology is that it has miniaturized accelerometers, which can, uh, which are now so small that you can have several of these accelerometers on the top of your uh, thumbnail. And these are uh, tiny sensors now are widely used in things like smartphone, wearable devices, automotive systems, and many other applications that require you to detect motion and uh, uh, control. But of course, accelerometer and gyroscopes are not the only MEMS device that exists. There are many other MEMS devices that, that are used to perform other operations. And MEMS device, uh, because uh, they are fabricated with similar techniques that allow uh, the, uh, the fabrication of integrated circuits, it allows for mass production uh, and uh, at low cost and easy integration with uh, other electronic chips. And that has thrown open uh, this area where we are using these motion sensors in more and more of uh, IoT and uh, other such devices. So going beyond motion sensors, let's talk about another sensor, which is called magnetometers. So Earth has a typically a magnetic field around it, and it has been used historically, for example, with, uh, let's say, uh, some of the early sea travels to allow people to navigate high seas. And Measuring a magnetic field can be very useful for also mobile mobile devices such as smartphone and tablets that may need to determine its orientation and location. Or it can also be used for uh, things like satellites or spacecraft to help them orient themselves and communicate uh, with the ground state stations effectively. And the sensor that allows you to measure magnetic field is called magnetometer. So typically, you are not going to be using a uh, accelerometer or magnetometer separately, but you might have something called an inertial uh, measurement unit, part of your device. And what is an IMU? So IMU is a sensor that combines accelerometer, gyroscope, and sometimes magnetometer together in a single unit. And it is a component of many devices that require sensing and control. For example, your sensor tag uh, has an IMU. It, uh, IMU are also used in drones, robots, virtual reality headsets. So typically an IMU has all these sensing capability, but it also has processing and computational capabilities that are built into the design. And this allows these IMUs to perform tasks such as filtering, calibration, and fusion of sensor data. And it can allow them to improve their accuracy and reliability. So IMU communicates uh, to the, your microcontroller through various embedded buses such as I2C, SPI, or UART. So let's look at uh, uh, an, another kind of sensor that we encounter quite often in our day-to-day -day life. So let's, if you walk around the corridor in your building or in university, you might see these lights that turn on and off by detecting a motion nearby. So how are they detecting this motion? Typically, they're using this sensor that is called passive infrared or PIR sensor. So PIR sensors are sensors that detect motion by sensing change in the infrared radiation that are emitted by objects in their field of view. As I said, they are widely used for applications such as automatic lighting, security systems, smart home, and other such devices. So these PIR sensors are based on pyroelectric materials, which can generate electric charge when they're exposed to heat or thermal radiation. And by measuring the voltage across the material, the sensor can detect the, uh, the presence of uh, or, or movement of warm objects such as human body or uh, animals uh, near its uh, field of view. And these PR sensors to, of, uh, to increase their sensitivity often have a white cover that is called Fresnel lens that covers the uh, pyroelectric material. And this lens acts like a concentrator of the infrared radiation, focusing it on the material. And it allows it to create larger change when uh, motion happens and also allows it to extend the, its range or how far the, uh, the source of heat has to move for it to be able to detect these movements. And this lens also allows uh, these PR sensors to create multiple zones of detection, 
which can allow these BR sensors to be able to distinguish different uh, directions of motion. So PR sensors can uh, uh, be interfaced uh, uh, to your microcontroller and they are typically either analog or digital. So if they're analog, you would need to feed it through an analog to digital converter on your microcontroller. Or if they're digital, then you can uh, interface it directly with your uh, microcontroller. So of course uh, we have covered many different uh, sensors, but they are not the only sensors. There are many other different kinds of sensors that you can explore and learn about. Uh, your sensor tag actually has also several of these sensors, uh, uh, including things like microphone and uh, you're very welcome to try these uh, sensors. For example, there are also sensors that allow you to measure biometric data such as oxygen level or, or heart rate, which can then be used for health or fitness monitoring. There are also sensors that allow you to measure soil moisture content, which can be used for uh, agriculture purposes. Another category of sensors is uh, 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 used to measure environmental parameters such as air uh, humidity qu or quality of the air in terms of the pollutants. So sensors at the end are ex an amazing devices that allow you to sense and, and understand the physical world and in some respect bridge this uh, digital and the physical world. So with this, we uh, conclude uh, this uh, part of the lecture. Thank you.